everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I am truly humbled to be standing here this morning uh, to be able to deliver this message for you guys. As most of you probably know, I had a little, a little fender bender of sorts a couple of weeks ago. I like to call it that. Um, and just so happy to be standing here. God is good. Um, Every day. And so today I want us to uh, turn to First John. And uh, we are going to look at uh, 1 John chapter 3, and we are going to start at verse 13. And um, let me read that for you as you guys are turning. Chapter, 1 John chapter 3, starting with verse 13, and we'll go all the way to 18. Do not be surprised, brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life. Because we love our brothers and sisters. This is one who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has the world's goods, and sees a fellow believer in need, but withholds compassion from him, how does God's love reside in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. So a lot said right there, is there not? Amen. And I think that's something very apropos for us, not only in our country today, but what we're facing around the world. Um, you know, what Israel is going through right now, those are God's people. And we need to stand up and fight with God's people. You know, we, we talk so much about something that we call being woke, right? Mm -hmm. Today I'd like to challenge our church to be awake, <laughs> not woke, something completely different. And what I, what I think we need to come back to is the love that this passage is telling us about. The love of each other inside this body. Amen. And something that I think we have over time not taught enough. Do we really truly know what true love is? Can we spot it? Do we know the difference between what the world would like to talk, talk to us about tolerance, which truly isn't, and it isn't love? Amen. See, we have to understand that we have a foe in this world. And that foe would like to take what is good and twist it into something that it's not. And that, I believe, is a love inside our church. I think we have got to stand together in what biblical love truly is. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. We're going to look at what does the Bible tell us about love? What does the Bible say to us on how we are to love one another? Right? And I think Jesus gave that wonderful commandment, did he not? In John, in fact, we're going to go look at that right now. That's going to be in John, chapter 13, and we are going to look at verse 34 through 35. And here's what Jesus said. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you that you also love one another. But this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Do you agree that we have not been great at that aspect throughout time? Have we often fallen short in the love aspect toward one another? Have we also often not recognized what love should look like? Have we mistaken it for something else? in our life? Have we allowed hate to enter and love to exit at times? And I think we have. I think, I think Jesus is very, very adamant here that the world is going to hate us. And he uses that word. The Bible uses that word. And I want to give you an example of how that, that happens. I took a job not too long ago. And I took a job um, to be a chaplain. And we uh, took the job because the director was a very good, strong Christian woman. And she was, she was let go from that company. And a new director was brought in this week. 
And that director said that they were no longer in need of chaplain services, but I was to transition into a new position. Mm. And, uh, and she said, well, and you will not work the weekend, you won't be able to be, you will have to uh, call and not be able to preach on Sunday. Mm. And I said, excuse me? And she said, well, yes, you're going to have to make a choice between your job or God. Wow. And she said, and I expect that you will choose money over God. Whoa. I just yeah. kindly took the key off my keychain and laid it on her desk and exited. Amen. That is what we have to do as the Christian church today. Amen. We have to stand on the principles of the Bible. We have to stand up for God in our life. Amen. We have to stand up for the love that we can show one another because the world is not going to hand it to us. In fact, they're going to turn and try to take it at every step they can. Amen. You know, that's the greatest lie amongst all of it, is that we are to feel hated. That is what Satan wants us to experience inside this body. That's why it is so important for us to love one another. Amen. To truly love one another and know what true love is to each other. Amen. If the world is going to tear us apart and knock us down, we have to lift each other up, right? Amen. Because that is how Jesus wants us to treat each other. Amen. Here's, you know, I, I often tell this story, and I'm sure you've heard other pastors tell this story before, but you know, it, it's known inside a church that you know, sometimes when people will come in, you know, that person that comes in all dressed up that looks really nice and they're rushing to the front of the building, you know, to sit up front, and then that person comes in, and he's not very clean, and he, he doesn't, you know, look very good, and, and so they want him to sit in the back, right? You, I'm sure you've all heard that story before, right? You know, the Bible gives us a parable pretty close to the same thing. There are two people praying in the, in the temple, and Jesus was telling the Pharisees this. One, a Pharisee, who is beautifully praying, has all the words, knows everything, is, is delivering scripture well memorized and putting on quite a show, I'm sure. And then there's the tax collector next to him, who is not well spoken, but has a repentant and contrite heart Amen. and showing love to God. Which prayer is heard? And Jesus asked that question to them because it is the simple, the loving, the good of heart, that repentant heart that we have. And that heart has to be not only for God, but for each other. Amen. And that we have to lift each other up in the body of Christ. Amen. So that we feel that support. So that when things happen and people say to each other, like I witnessed just this week, that we can stand strongly on the word of God and know that there are people behind us who have our back in that instance and have that with love. And so we need to teach each other. We need to teach our children. We need to teach our, the body of Christ and what true love really looks like. And the Bible gives us to that, gives us what love is. And we're going to look at that right now. I want us all to turn to uh, 1 Corinthians. I'm sure many of you already know where I'm headed. Um, but it's going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We are given instruction. So that's what I love about, uh, I like about Paul, you know, uh, there's a lot I like about Paul, there's a lot I fight with Paul on, I think, time and again, but what I really like about his letters is that not only is there strong theology in the first half of the letters, but then they turn and there's great application. And here, this is a teaching moment, this is an application moment from Paul as to what love looks like and what true love is and this is what we should measure love to each other all the time that this is biblical love this is divine love this is unconditional love this is the love that jesus gave to us this is the love that jesus commands us to give to one another so let's read it together starting at verse number four in chapter 13 of first corinthians love is patient Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, 
does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, Amen. bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Wow. What a description of what love really looks like, right? So where do we fall short in this? We're human. We all do, don't we? I can tell you there's times I've not been very patient. You know, there are, there are times that I've probably not been very kind. Um, but that's the beauty of when we become a believer and God is working inside of our life, that there is an action that we go through um, that was brought up this morning, and I said, oh, I said that quite a number of times. It's called sanctification. And that is our becoming Christ-like through our believing life. Amen. And it is not a switch. It is not instant. It is a lifelong pursuit. And so there are times where we will fall short. There are times where our humanity will creep in and will seem like we're just not quite there. And that's when we need to reach for the word of God. Amen. And that's when we have to rest upon the direction that Jesus is giving us. You know, there have been times where we as a church have fallen short in this process. You know, there have been people that have walked out of churches that said, I did not recognize this. This is not what I felt inside that church. Well, if you didn't feel it there, don't go there. This love should radiate from all of us inside this building at all times. It should be the joy that we manifest to each other. It should be what we want to share constantly with someone else. Amen. Amen. You see, this, this club isn't exclusive. It's inclusive. Amen. You know, there, I, um, I like John, and, and I, you know, I was asked in seminary, do a little study on the 12 disciples and figure out who you are most like and then share it, right? So that was a hard study because I thought, well, geez, who am I going to be most like? Um, and then after much, much study, I realized I am probably most like John for two reasons. One, I believe strongly in belief. And it is something that the whole world can belong to. For we stand on that, right? Yep. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That whosoever isn't just people in this room. That whosoever is the world. And let's take that verse one step further. Let's go to 17. For he came into the world not to condemn it, but to save it. Save it. Amen. And that is the world. Saving the world. Everyone has that chance to come and accept. To come and believe. To come and accept only the love that Jesus can give them. Amen. See, we all have this yearning. We're, we're made as a creature to worship, right? And if we don't worship, we're going to fill that need with something, right? And so the world wants to fill it with this love that they don't understand. You know, and then when that becomes knowledgeable to them, then they want to run from it. Why? It's so easy. Run to it. Reach out in belief. Reach out in faith. Belief and faith are a two-sided coin, right? Mm -hmm. See, faith is belief in action. And we talk a lot about faith inside the church. But we need to be a more faithful people today. We not, need not be woke, but we need to be awake. Mm -hmm. We need to understand what is going on inside of our world. We need to understand this hate that is spewing in from everywhere, not only against us, but against each other. See, Satan's an interesting fellow. You know, he really has one goal. Do we all know what that one goal is? Destruction. 
that one goal that he has is to destroy everything that God has created. Yeah. So there is no love in him. There is, there is none. Amen. So when he gives you a lie, it is to your own destruction. Amen. So don't reach for the lie. Reach for the truth. Amen. And that's something that we as believers have a wonderful wonderful guy. We could just stand on this, the word of God. We could just stand on this, the truth. This is the truth. You know, we talk a lot about racism and hatred. You know, I stand up here thinking about, you know, when I was in school, you know, you have members of Congress who, in the name of love, spew hate. Um, is leading our country. You have a huge racial divide in our country. We have division on who we are in identity. We have all of these things to divide us all. And you know what's, what's funny is I, I stood reading um, or rereading Martin Luther King this week. Um, and um, you know he was standing at a precipice when he gave his I Have a Dream speech. A million people in Washington how far we've come away from that speech. How far we've moved in an opposite direction. Do we have less racism today? Absolutely not, I think we have more. Do we have unity today? No, I think we have further division. But we can be unified, unified in this body, unified with Christ, standing in his love, standing in his grace, so we have to understand what that gift truly is that we were given. You know, we, we, we talk a lot about what he did for us. Do we really truly understand that? This is a man who took on all of my sin, and, and I know that was a lot for me. And I'm, I'm sure many of you feel the same. So let's not gloss over what he went through. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. He paid the ultimate price. Amen. He laid on, he wanted or asked his father if it was his will to have it go past him. And the father said, no, you have to do this. And he accepted it without complaint. Amen. For me, for all of you, for the world. Amen. See, it's not just for one person. Everyone has the ability to accept to believe, come into the love, step out of the hate. Amen. Amen. See, they, Satan wants you in that hate. Yeah. He wants you to lie in your own self-pity, in your own self not feeling good enough. And that's not it. God says you are good enough. Amen. In God's sight, you're perfect. Amen. I didn't believe it for a long, long time. In fact... As many of you know, I shouldn't probably stand here and give this today. There was a time in my life I would much rather have snorted up something, sat on a bar stool and felt sorry for myself, and then stand in the love of Christ. But people in a building like this prayed for me. And then one day, at the worst of the low of my low, he called me. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And all you have to do is grab his hand Amen. and he will save you. Yes. When he knocks on that door, answer. Amen. Amen. Stand in the belief of who Jesus is. Amen. 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 Because he can save you. He saved me. Amen. You don't have to stand in what you've been before. When you accept and you believe and you love Jesus and he comes into your heart, you are a new creation. Mm -hmm. The old has passed away and you no longer stand who you were. You stand in his love right now, today, in his truth. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's the change that happened in your life. And I stand here as an example of how it can work for you. Amen. You see, nobody's too low. Don't believe that lie. Amen. Don't let the world tell you you can't come into his loving embrace. Oh, yes, you can. He is standing there waiting for you. Very much. You know, 
the biggest lie we're told is that he doesn't want to save the world, that there are only a few people who can be saved, and that is furthest from the truth. The Bible tells us he wants to save the whole world. That's why he sent his son. You know? And that's what we need to stand in and believe. With all this hatred swelling around, when all these changes in our world where we don't seem to get anywhere, there will be a time, there will be a day when Jew and Gentile, Catholic and Protestant, Believers and unbelievers will all have to stand together on that day when he comes back and he stands before you because every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, and we will all stand there and say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Yeshua. Hallelujah. And that's when all the hate of the world will pass away. And that's when we will stand in pure love. In this love, the love that we just talked about. So let's reread it again. Let's go through it one more time. Because I think it's important. And we need to really truly understand what the love of God is. Ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting at verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, it endures all things. Love never and that's truly what we all can stand on today, right? Amen. That this love, this divine love, and this love that God shows to us will never fail. That everything that he has promised us will come to pass. Mm -hmm. See, that's another thing we need to share with unbelievers. You know, they don't believe that this is it, that this is the truth, that he will stand and give us and deliver everything that he has promised. And I tell you, he certainly will. Amen. That's right. You just have to stand on it. Amen. You know, we as Christians have to start living like Christians. Amen. Right? Amen. We have to stop just saying, you know, well, you know, I read it. <coughs> no, don't just read it. Live it. Amen. 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 But live it like Christ wants us to live it. Yes, yes, yes. You know, he gives us wonderful examples. Who... I, I, I use her a lot, so people in my Bible study are going to know right off the bat what I'm talking about. In the Bible, who is the first convert that we that is recorded to us? Who is the first one who hears Jesus witnessing and believes that we have recorded? The woman at the well. The woman at the well. What do we know about her? Is she righteous? Is she no. In fact, everyone steered clear of her, right? Yeah. I mean, she went to the well at a time when no one else would be there. She's the first one recorded who believes. And just a little bit beforehand, the first one Jesus witnessed to is actually Nicodemus, a Pharisee. We don't know if he's converted yet. The Bible doesn't tell us that. But he has an argument with Jesus. See, Jesus will come to you and knock when you're ready. You respond when you're ready. He knocks. <laughs> I may not know. I don't know all of your hearts. But God does. Amen. God knows exactly where you sit today and what you need. Amen. See, we often talk about identity today. Who are we? You know? And it's so silly because you're perfect. God made you perfect. There's no way to second guess who you are today. That's exactly who God wants you to be. Amen. So you know what? You don't need to have any other identity other than you plus Jesus equals wholeness. Amen. That's all you need to know. Amen. That's the identity you stand on today. Stand on your identity in Christ. It will make you complete. Amen. That's right. The world cannot deliver that to you today. Only Jesus can. Amen. 
he will bring you in his righteousness to the Father. We have no way of getting there on our own. We'll never measure up. But that's okay. We don't have to. Because there's a gift. There's the one man who loves you just like we read every single day, no matter what. You fall down, he'll pick you up. You fall short, he'll take you the distance. See, he loves you like this. No one else ever will be able to do that. So reach for him. Find your identity in him. Love like he loves. Be that shining beacon to the woman at the well. Reach for the lost. The Bible tells us that Jesus came for the lost, not the righteous. We need to reach for the lost as well. We need to be a shining beacon on a hill. We need to be what everyone else wants because they can't understand how we got it because they can't explain it and neither can we because Jesus gives it to us. Amen. That's right. See, he goes beyond all understanding. All, all wisdom comes from him through the Holy Spirit in his word. Amen. <coughs> That's why I encourage all of you today to love like Jesus loves. Amen. To be in the midst of death and forgive a thief. Yes. Yeah. You know, a thief who, who recognizes him on his, at his lowest moment and that love transcends into paradise. So that's what Jesus promised right there at that moment. See, we often, it's, it's my faith, you, you guys that are in my Bible study will also know my favorite line in the Bible is, uh, it is finished. Amen. And that's because Jesus came to do what he needed to do, which was to save the lost and save this world. And it's easy for us to be able to do it. We do it through one action. We do it through belief. Amen. He's reaching for you. Grab that loving hand. Let him pull you out of where you are today. Amen. Reach his hand. Experience his love. Stand in his grace Amen. for his gift to you. Amen. Well, then, let's bow our heads. Close your eyes. Dear Jesus, if there's any of us here today that need more of you, that need to come to that loving embrace, let us accept that. Let us hear the knock and open the door. Let us always be able to stand in the love that you've shown us, this unconditional love that you give to us in an example here in 1 Corinthians. May we always truly shine your love to the world. May they come to salvation because of that love. May they turn from their sin because of your love. May we always be repentant because of your love. May we not stand as believers in unrepentant sin. May we never experience a hardened heart. May we always be open to you and to your word and to the Holy Spirit for illumination and to your son for the gracious gift he gave to us on the cross, for that love that he showered upon us through his death, through his resurrection and his coming again in a day when we all shall be free and home with him in paradise. For we humbly pray and are so very thankful for your son and in his name. Amen. Amen. Spend some time together. Love each other today. Thank you so very much. Have a great day, everyone.